Thank you. <laughs> Thank you both. Um, I'll start with a question for Kelly. Um, if you could just tell us about the origins um, of the film, and I'm actually particularly curious about, it's a film by an artist. So it suggests that there's a little bit of a self-reflexive aspect here. Um, actually- Or not, if you- uh, <laughs> No, no. Um, when we, uh, Jonathan Raymond, who I wrote the script with, when we started out, we, um, we went to Vancouver, we were gonna do a biopic on the painter Emily Carr. And she had a period in her life of, um, she became a landlord thinking it would make it, give her more time to paint. But it ended up consuming her world and she just was a landlord and didn't really get any painting done during those 10 years, which were the years we were gonna focus on. So we went to Vancouver thinking we were gonna research this little known um, artist. And it turns out Emily Carr is like hugely famous in Canada. And um, there's, yeah, statues of her everywhere. It'd be like coming here and saying, who's Andy Warhol? You know, it, it, like she's huge. So anyway, we, we, we went away from that. But on that trip, we were both sort of having these family crises and uh, couldn't really focus on what we were doing. And sort of that ended up. I don't know, it was kind of a long road to get to what it became. But so was the starting point this idea of like the economic realities yeah. of being an art and how an art. to balance uh, life and art and, and, and what is it like to, you know, just need to make art and want to make art every day, but not if you don't necessarily have a built in audience or, uh, you know, people that are going to you that you know, you know, just that you're doing it for yourself because it's, you know, it's what you get up and do. And so that was kind of the interest. And then it sort of got, and, and, and during this time, I, I made a couple of short films where I just went to studios to film two of the artists whose work is in the film, uh, Michelle Segre, who I think is here tonight, who does, who's the work that Joe Stand does. up, Michelle. Uh, where's Michelle? And yay. yay! So the script was written with Michelle's uh, work in mind for Joe and uh, Cynthia Latte's work for uh, Lizzie. the Lizzie character. And then um, uh, the other short I did was I, I filmed uh, Jessica Jackson Hutchins, who did the glass that's the um, visiting artist stuff. So I was sort of filming people just figuring out how they work in their studios and stuff like that. It was kind of a long road to getting to um, what the script is, yeah. So the shorts inform this, I guess, this interest in, in process that is very, very pronounced yeah. in the film. I mean, even the credits, you know, it's like throughout there are these like, kind of patient, immersive scenes of, of artists working. Yeah, that, um, the, the school, the Oregon College of Arts and Crafts is uh, recently defunct, um, like a lot of art schools in the country. And that was kind of a, that place was uh, in the Pacific Northwest for ceramics was a really big deal. And um, really because of COVID, we were able to film there. Um, before it gets changed into whatever it's going to become. Um, but, uh, and a lot of people we knew uh, were involved with that school. And uh, yeah, so I think that all those things, I mean, it's kind of hard to remember the exact, but um, yeah, we became closer to our own world, like that street we shot on with the, uh, where Joe rolls, rolls the tire and where the apartments are. Those apartments are, are, you know, are, we've had a lot of friends that have lived there. I've lived in one of those apartments before, and that's so. It kind of got built very closely around our our world, yeah. And so you said you had these um, artists in mind, Michelle and, and Cynthia. So did 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 um, Hong and Michelle Williams work with these artists, and what was that process like? Um, I think Michelle definitely did. I won't speak for her, but I think she did. Uh, I worked with uh, my artist, Michelle Segre, and I went to her studio in the Bronx and spent a day with her, and she was just so generous and showed me 
all of her techniques that she that she does and because I, I would have to recreate it in the movie. And so I just found that to be so amazing because I know if I had somebody shadowing me on set, like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, how do you do that? I, I would probably be uh, less gracious than Michelle was. So I also had my older brother with me and that was really fun. I mean, I think those are the types of uh, memories that I, I take away from from this filming experience was just like very personal. Um, Michelle actually said something. She posed a very interesting question. She 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 said, so is this character that you're doing like are, are you studying me like while you're here? Are, are you like trying to pick up mannerisms or anything like that? Because my art is so personal to me. And so I can't imagine that the character that you're playing wouldn't somehow be based off of me because, you know, she's creating this art. And I was like, you're right. Um, I, I don't have a good response for that. <laughs> and then, well, and then Michelle's like in some of the scenes being her own installer. Um, yeah, well, we, that kind of happened. Uh, yeah, who the, who the characters were. It was, I kept saying these are two separate you know, you're not playing Michelle, you're not playing Cynthia, but it, it's impossible for it not to sort of things to bleed together. Michelle is a horrible landlord, should be said, um, <laughs> when she's not being a good artist. No, um, but you know, uh, and Andre went out to, uh, went in California to learn how to uh, sort of become the kiln master and uh, he, so we hooked him up with, uh, a school there where he could go and um, learn about clay and the kilns, which I thought would be t a day. And he got really hooked on it and just kept going back and um, just like got really excited about clay. Like, oh, I knew I, there was something I could make here. And yeah, so he just kept, the guy who was like helping him out, he like became his regular tutor. Yeah, so. Since you, you brought up Andre, can you, Talk about casting him, and can you talk about the flute? Um, it, uh, uh, the ca yeah, I don't. The casting thing is is weird. I I don't know how I had, I had his picture amongst pictures, and uh, in in some photo or whatever, not from a film, but anyway, I thought he just sort of came into my mind as starting to think of him as the. Uh, is Eric the kiln guy, and um, and Gail Keller, the casting director, had worked with him before, and <clears throat> she hooked us up, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I sure, you know." He was very like he just likes to do stuff he hasn't done before, and then he just sort of does his thing, and then he walks around and plays the flute. So on set, there's kind of always this flute sound coming in from wherever you are, you know. Just, it's really nice, like in different atmospheres. So on the last day of the school, um, I asked him if I could record some of it, and he went out into a field. And um, it was a nice last day for the crew and all to come out and hear Andre just play his flute and um, recorded it. So I had it in the editing room um, to do with what I wanted, yeah. To come back to what you were both talking about, this idea of like not of having artists in mind in terms of the artworks, but not necessarily, you know, modeling the characters on them. Can you talk about how you conceptualize the characters of, of Lizzie and Joe and this very particular relationship they have? They're, they're very different artists making very different kinds of work and they, they navigate their spaces in very different ways. Well, we've um, made this film where in a small town where we live in Portland. <laughs> It was, we had a crew and cast and crew screening a couple of weeks ago, and it's been very, like, everyone I run into, was that me? Was that my truck? Did you think of me? Is that supposed to be me? And I'm like, oh my God, what have we done? <laughs> but um, everybody's a salad of people. And, um, and yeah, nobody's, anyone in particular, I swear. And um, uh, so yeah, I don't know. It evolves because then you know it's like what John, whoever John's thinking of, and what I'm thinking of, and then eventually, um, like with Marianne and uh, Michelle Williams, you know, uh, Marianne's bringing her thing in with Michelle's. So it just like keeps 
you know, like process, like what the film's about. It keeps evolving and changing and building it up and it changes and it becomes this next thing and this next thing. And, and then when they're together, they have their dynamic and way with each other and it becomes sort of something, something else too, I think. Um, it's your first time working with Kelly. Yes. I was curious to hear you talk about what it was like on... I Pretend mean, I'm not here. Go ahead. <laughs> Say great things. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's always hard to jump uh, on a train that's already moving. And so my fear in coming into this, I, I'm a big admirer of... I was a big admirer of Kelly's before, but I knew that Michelle and Kelly had worked together so often before. My fear was that I was going to you know, have to jump on this moving train because they had already had this like a relationship. And it was just so easy. I, I, I could not have imagined how um, just fun this shoot would be. I, Michelle and I bonded over being uh, mothers. Uh, we both had children around the same age, babies around the same age. So a lot of the times when we weren't shooting, we were just talking about breastfeeding or napping or, you know, like comparing notes about things. So I think that's where, um, I guess some of the, the bond that, that you see, the relationship that you see on screen is probably from that. Um, the other aspect of the film, which seems strikes me as personal or at least informed by experience is um the teaching and the, the college environment the art school um i think many people here know that you also teach yeah. yeah that was the first time teaching in um the film world came together which was very lovely i think ben coonley might be here tonight also um who did the projections and and ben are you here somewhere uh but ben came out and um I teach with him at Bard, and he came out and built his dome with the um, art department and uh, set up all the projections. And that was just like a really cool thing for me for those groups of people to be working together. And um, yeah, and of course, uh, there's, yeah, teaching is, def you know, it's in there for sure. And um, yeah, and I also just a lot of, uh, inspiration from Black Mountain College too. I think just reading about that place over the years and being really fascinated with that school. And um, so, yeah, it's all, uh, yeah, that makes it, um, there's definitely like the whole office administration stuff. There's a lot of bard in there. And no one in particular, <laughs> just to make that perfectly clear. <laughs> um. Maybe we can just talk about the animals in the film, which is another through line through your work. My first day meeting Michelle was during pigeon training. That's right. Okay. It's weird. I wasn't as like quick a vibe as I was hoping for with you guys, <laughs> if I remember. Um, but yeah, that's right. That was pigeon training. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's hard to talk about animals. Uh, cats, birds. Well, you've also had pain, dogs yes. and cows and <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> I know. Um, it's hard working with animals. The birds were interesting. They're, there's birds that you can hold. That's Ruby, right? And uh, that you can wrap. And then there's a, a bird that flies. And then there's a bird that lands. And then there are homing pigeons that you... So there are many birds. Well, Ruby's the main one, but there are, yeah, there are different birds. But like that flying around, that's, a couple, that's there's the flyer and the lander. <laughs> and then the homing pigeons, the big stress is uh, they need half an hour to get home. And it's before it gets dark. <laughs> and so that was the, um, uh, so I, I forget how many we had. We had like maybe 12 or six. And anyway, Hong, you want to talk about? But Ruby was the main one. Ruby okay. was the main the star. Yeah. But yeah. your no. co stars, your. What's <laughs> 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 it like working with Ruby? 
poor thing. She's like bandaged. Most well, of the time. Act, you know, the, the, the animal handlers, the trainers were actually very lovely people oh, okay. um, yeah. because sometimes that's, that's where the trouble is. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They were great. They were really great. Yeah. I am, I'm getting the sign that I, we have only like time for one more. So, um, I'm going to ask another question, but I want to say that, um, Kelly's going to come back and do a conversation with another filmmaker who is in the main slate this year, Joanna Hogg on Sunday at 6 PM. And, uh, that's, will be a great opportunity to hear her say more about her work. Um, but I'm going to ask just one final question, um, which is I was in the audience for, for part of the screening. Um, and there was a lot of, a lot of laughter. Um, and I'm wondering if, you know, just this, I think there's been humor in, 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 in much of your work. Um, but it seems more, more overt, more pronounced here, like just in terms of lot, like the writing, the delivery, the cutting, like, it just seems like you were, you know, this is, this is your comedy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess so. Uh, am I dying? Is it over? <laughs> um, uh, it was, you know, it's been dark times, let's face it. It's really dark times that we uh, are, were in, are in. And um, so, yeah, it was sort of intentional to, uh, just for ourselves, to be steeped in something that wasn't like art and humor and uh, things that are... Uh, just a little more reaffirming than um, what the world's dishing up at the moment. Yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot for having us. Yeah, thanks it's for good coming. Good note to end on. Thank you, Kelly Hong. Thank you so much. Thank you.